What is going on YouTube fitness? Family, Eric Jankin back here with another video. I know you guys have been enjoying kind of my more raw, full workout videos. I've been doing kind of my top exercises, but I also wanted to include more in this series. So we're gonna do literally a true push day, full off season mode right now. So trying to get absolutely enormous. So I'm gonna walk you through from top to bottom, the methodology, what I'm training, the exercise, why I'm doing it, what order it's going in, what I'm trying to target specifically. So without further ado, let's crush some chest and tries. All right, first exercise, we're gonna do a downward fly. So everybody's like, why don't you start with a heavy press? I really like starting with a fly movement for a couple reasons. Really opens up the chest, makes me feel a lot more primed for my pressing movements. Second reason is that fatigue. I wanna build up a little bit of fatigue, which sounds strange going into my pressing movements. The reason for that is my goal is growth, hypertrophy. So if I can actually lift less weight on my presses, put myself at less risk, because pressing you're obviously stronger than a fly position. So if I can pre-fatigue, I don't have to press as heavy. That way, when my presses come, I maybe can do 70%, 60%, maybe 80% of what I could have done if I had started with that exercise. Also, I'm warmed up, so I don't have to worry about as much injury. Flies, I never really feel like, oh my God, I'm gonna injure myself. But that being said, really wanna push yourself on their fly sets. So I'm gonna go four sets probably here, and then we're gonna pull up a bench and do a couple other variants. Starting with our fly. So the biggest impetus here, I wanna almost match the angle of my upper body to the ground. So. I'm not quite at 90 degrees at the hip, so I'm not like here, but I'm about here. So I'm probably about 110, 120 degrees through the hip angle. I'm gonna drive down and through, squeeze, slow on that eccentric. I'm gonna really open up. You see how I turn the hands almost back towards me? That's gonna allow for more stretch to that pec minor that where, where it inserts into the delt. And what I'm gonna do is just continually open up using this exercise. So when I say open up, I wanna hold that stretch position really feel that chest really opening, that tissue stretching under load. So this has the duality benefit of, okay, not only am I getting a good warm up and starting to get some blood flow into the targeted tissue, but I'm also opening up the tissue as I do so. And as you'll notice in a lot of my training, I'll continue to increase that range of motion as the workout progresses. So I'll continue to get more and more opened up. A lot of guys get more and more closed off as they train because it keeps training these shortened modalities. I want to keep lengthening every single rep, every single set and getting as much activation and motor recruitment out of the chest as possible because the more you can stretch and open up those fibers, the more motor recruitment that you're utilizing throughout the entire chest. So I'm going to get 12, maybe 15 reps here. Really focus on time and attention. Nothing crazy. As you can tell, I'm, this is about 90 on the stack right now. I would honestly start maybe 30, 40, 50 for you guys who are just doing it the first time. And I'm really getting a good squeeze, pressing those hands together. Another form cue, see how I bend my elbows towards the back? So not as much as you would for a true press, but you're not keeping them completely straight. Because you keep them completely straight, a lot of times it's going to go a lot into that front delt and also into the biceps. So you want to maintain at least a slight elbow bend that'll help you keep it in the chest. So it doesn't have to be here. I think that turns more into a press, but right in between those two extremes. It's really getting some good blood flow. <sighs> All right, exercise two, we're going to do our first pressing movement. So I'm gonna wrap, bring this around. I've got a bench set on 90 degrees. Probably one of my favorite pressing movements. What I'm gonna do is start almost palm supinated, push back, stretch, drive out and turn the palms over. So we're gonna go, Either neutral, whatever is comfortable for you, come back, stretch at the back, or if you want to get even more stretch, do that pec minor, come back to supinated, press out, and squeeze. Good slow on the eccentric, good posture. You really isolate through that upper chest here. Push, squeeze. So yeah, if your mobility is not quite there, you have to keep it at neutral right here and then push out. Squeeze to that upper chest. Nice and tight. Oh. Oh. Then I get to almost failure with these rotational presses. I'm just gonna go strict presses with a shorter range of motion. I'm pretty much a failure now, and I'm gonna go shorter range of motion, palms down. Oof. 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 
burns so bad. But yeah, so that's what's called a mechanical drop set. I do them all the time. So instead of dropping the weight, I'll either shorten the range of motion, I go from supinated to pronation, just to pronated, which is a little easier to do in a shortened range of motion. Or what you can do on those, just hit some partials the very back in the stretch position. Hitting partial reps in a stretch position is extremely efficacious for hypertrophy. When you're opened up, you're actually hitting a ton of chest. So if you can do some partials in that stretch position, a lot of times you actually drive in more hypertrophy than if you hit partials here at the most contracted position. Obviously, you don't have to take every set to failure, especially when you're starting out. But yeah, try to shoot for that three to five reps in reserve. And then towards that last set, maybe hit those kind of pass failure techniques, uh, those kind of intensity techniques like I just showed you. All right, third exercise. So we're done with those presses. Crazy amount of burn and pump on those. So the reason I like those a lot, you have a lot of play with your hand positioning, unlike a traditional, let's say, barbell press. Uh, you get more range of motion. It's a lot safer. You have more stretch. You know the drill, guys. Stretch me, perch me, all that bullshit. Um, actually, it's worked though. Um, so what we're gonna do next is an incline bench fly, kind of for upper chest. One of my favorite variants, so we're gonna do. Set up your bench on like a 33% incline. So about not quite at a 45 degree, probably right around 37 to 40 degrees. We're gonna go up on the incline. We're gonna reach back forward with slightly belt elbows, bent elbows. And then we're gonna squeeze up and through with palms are gonna kind of be shaped into a V-shape at the top of the rep. So we're gonna reach back for it, push consciously through the chest, and squeeze the hands into like a, a shape of a V, the letter V at the top of your rep. So reach back for it, push up, squeeze. And stick with me, I'm gonna hit eight to 10 here, and I'm gonna hit a pretty nutty super set, which I really enjoy. Ugh. All right, now I'm gonna sit myself up on the angle of the bench, sit upright, and we're gonna hit more true upright flies here. For 10, a little faster. Such a crazy burn, dude. I'm like trying to come back down to earth right now yeah so that superset with the really big stretch kind of hitting more of that mid chest that first part of the variant and sitting upright hitting more upper chest see how you're in that second part i don't come up to here a lot of people they make the mistake on their upper chest flies to come way high like over their head you're just going to go front out it's like a front out raise at that point you want to come to about here right about nose or chin height keeping that contraction in the pack because you'll watch see how it goes beyond here now I lose, my chest is not contracted anymore. It's all front delt. Whereas here, you see how my chest is still nice and puffed up. And so do that by yourself. You're training. Feel when that you lose that contraction in the upper chest and that's as high as you should go. Three sets here and then we'll hop into our first tricep movement. All right, next exercise, we got our first tricep iso movement. I like this push down variant on the incline bench. So what I'm gonna do is set up the bench. Same thing about 33 degree. Same as I had it for the last exercise, I'm gonna stretch at the top, keep those elbows pinned down, push out and squeeze. So I'm using a straight bar, you can use the V bar, V grip attachment. I like this one just because I get a really big stretch in both heads of my tricep at the top of my reps. So you see how I keep the elbows tucked? Completely isolated, I can't use momentum. Squeeze through at the bottom, get a good one to two count hold at the bottom of the rep. So look it in, push squeeze all the way through down towards the quads. And unfortunately for myself, we're gonna superset that with about a 30 second rest with some dips. Still getting good tempo here. Got a really good burn from that ISO movement. We're gonna hop into a little bit more of a compound. So really good stretch, really good negative. About 15 seconds here. Dips are a little harder. I'm about 287 pounds, but we're gonna do it. I'm gonna go 12 to 15 with really good tempo. So triceps already burning. Slow eccentric. Stretch, drive out. Oh, it's failure. Fuck. Oh, by supersetting those, already a lot of fatigue built up. So getting that really big stretch 
really slow eccentric, it's tough, but try not to sacrifice form just to get reps. I think I only got 10 to 11 reps there. So we'll see if I can improve on that second and third set. But I'm really not as worried about reps. I literally took that to failure. I don't think I could have gotten out of the hole on that last rep, even if I really tried. I'm more focused on that than I am on the amount of reps or the amount of weight I'm using. Cause that's so much more important for hypertrophy is that intensity and how many reps are reserve, how close to failure you're getting. All right, so next one, supersetting deficit push-ups with the incline fly. So we're gonna do, start with the incline dumbbell fly. So we're going to go back on this 33 degree incline again. As we come down, we're gonna turn the dumbbells towards each other, but not all the way. So we'll be about halfway towards each other. Big stretch through the chest. Reach it back. Big open chest. And then fly up. So a lot of people will stop their flies about here. What you want to do is really open up the chest, arch the back, dig those elbows back, push up and squeeze. So this is a really good way to continue to open up and get maximal motor recruitment and pause on that stretch. With dumbbells, that power curve, you're going to get way more impetus as it goes farther from center of gravity. So as it comes out here, those dumbbells are going to get harder and harder based on just mechanical force. So what you want to do is utilize them when they're the hardest. Here, I've got basically no tension on my chest. It's stacking the joint. So I'm stacked between the wrist, elbow, and shoulder joint. So I pretty much got no tension on the chest. Here, my chest is the most exposed, and I'm going to hold that stretch. So I'm really milking that lengthen position to get as much hypertrophy as possible without using maybe as much top end weight as I could if I was had a shorter range of motion. So you see me, I can come all the way down here. I can play around with it. So my shoulder mobility is so good. My chest is so opened up. So we're gonna go 10 and 12 here. Also, if you don't tell your muscles to grow, they don't usually grow. So you have to tell them during your sets to fucking grow. Science, grow. All right, that's 12. Set these up, same dumbbells. So you're not that dick that's using like six sets of dumbbells. Get this shit off the bench. I don't even know whose that is. I hope it's his fucking guy. So I'm gonna go here, widen out these dumbbells, feet up on the bench. Took that segment of failure. Oh, as much as people are like, oh, Eric, why don't you do more presses? Technically, that is a press, even though it's a push up, it's a pressing modality. So I don't maybe do a traditional, what you would say, bench press, but I'll do something like this. Much safer, uses more range of motion, gives me a lot better peak contraction through the chest. So for me, I'm seeking those progressive failure points. And while this might be an easy exercise for me to perform at the beginning of the workout, at the end of the workout, Fatigue is so high. I'm just running on fumes now, so I'm just trying to get as much just tax. This is a very low wrist exercise to follow to finish off the workout with. It's obviously body weight, knock on wood. But I'm not gonna hurt myself doing this at the end of my session, even though I'm pretty tired and taxed. All right, so that is a wrap. Full push day, absolutely destroyed the chest and tricep session. Really good session. As you saw, not focus on the weight, not focus on heavy benching, Heavy pressing really is not my focus right now. Focus is growing, driving as much hypertrophy as possible in the safest manner possible. So people think, oh, you're so soft, just fucking heavy press. Sure, that's one way to create stimuli, but that's what we're trying to do is induce stimuli to drive as much hypertrophy as possible. Stimuli is gonna be more important than the weight. Obviously, my sets are very long, my reps are very slow, so I can induce more stimuli with less weight. So just remember that, take that in your workouts, try to slow down your reps, try to induce more range of motion. It's going to pay dividends for you. It's gonna keep you longer, healthier. Hope you guys love that session. I've been loving doing a little bit more of the organic workouts. About 287 pounds right now, trying to get to 310. So that's gonna be wild to see. Who knows what that's gonna look like. Hopefully it's not just another 20 pounds of body fat. Hopefully put a few pounds of muscle in that, but very excited to show you guys, have you guys along for the ride. So technically we're about two weeks into our off season after a 
eight week kind of health phase. We're gonna run this for about 16, 18 weeks, see how high we can get, and then do a little bit of a recomp, and then do our it right into our prep. So see how that goes. Excited to have you guys along for the ride. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do. Without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next video.